Hi everybody. So in this video, I want to give you some advice on the unit three thesis outline planner. So this is the planner you'll be writing for your unit three summary response essay, which is going to be focusing on the reading two that we've been doing in the course that we've worked on in unit two and have carried over to unit three. The focus of this paper is offering an ideological response, meaning an explanation um, of how you agree or disagree with the things the author is saying in their article about the topic. You are also going to incorporate that outside source that you found on the databases, reading three. So this planner is going to help you figure out how to bring all of these elements together. So what I want to do is go through and make sure that um, it's clear what you should be putting into this planner and give you some advice and places to look for different resources for completing the planner itself. Uh, so the first thing I want to talk about is the attention grabber or hook. So I will link in the announcement the general um, what is it called? Essay writing module, um, which is a module that you have available here. If you look over on the content section, if you choose the English common modules drop down, it's going to bring up a whole bunch of different modules that you can pull from. And one of those is this essay writing module. And if you open the essay writing module, it will pop up almost as if it were a course, but it has a little index there. And you can see that there's a section on hooks, transitions, and sentence structure. So this section that we have right here on um, hooks is really helpful in giving you ideas if you want to do something different than maybe you did on the personal essay or you felt like your hook wasn't very good on the personal uh, essay. You can see that there's these different examples um, and different ideas for getting a hook that will get the reader interested. So that's one resource. I will link this entire um, essay writing module, but now you know that this lesson two of five, the hooks, transitions, and sentence structure has an actual section in it about generating hooks. So if you need help there, that's a good resource for it. Um, the background and context statement often um, is confusing for students. Students often struggle with what exactly to do with this. One thing I suggest when you're writing an introduction is the background and context section is there to form a bridge between your hook and your thesis statement. Now remember that the purpose of this essay is to respond to the article that is our reading to article. That is the primary purpose of this paper, to offer some kind of response and reaction to that article. Consequently, that article is the topic of your paper. So if you have something like, let's say you put a hook in here that's a rhetorical question that's like, have you ever thought about, um, I don't know, have you, let's say that you were doing this summary response on a critical thinking article you read. Have you ever thought about how many times you um, work with critical thinking in a day? If you skip immediately to a thesis statement that says, um, I liked the things that uh, were said by the author in this article, that's going to be confusing. The purpose of the background context section is to set up the information the reader needs to know. So for this essay, you're going to want to include rhetorical information about the author, the publication year, the title of the article that you're going to be talking about. And that way you can sort of establish what the name of the author, what the article is, uh, maybe just a brief, since because if you look down here in the summary, you're going to want to mention all of that rhetorical information again. Here, you can just have like a brief explanation explanation um, uh, saying something like the article blah 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 talks about blah 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 as a quick way of introducing the article up here so that when you mention I agree with the author of the article I disagree with the author of the article when you write your thesis statement there's going to be some way of moving from this hook into the topic that you're covering which in this case is the article we're reacting to so in that background context section, you're basically just going to give sort of like a quick introduction to the article. You can wait to get into the rhetorical details down here like fully, but you are going to want to maybe introduce the author or the article title just to let the reader know, okay, so here's what we're going to be talking about. Um, and it's a nice bridge between why are you talking about this topic 
the article you read about the topic and what you think about the article. If you want to think about introductions as like a funnel, like people sometimes talk about. Um, so for creating the thesis statement, my recommendation is actually that you write this last. This thesis statement I recommend you do is the last thing because a response thesis statement, in this case, you're going to be offering up some opinions you have on the article, some things you agree with, some things you might not agree with, whether you agree with the other outside article you found more on this particular topic. All of this um, is going to go into these main points you have down here. So each main point is going to be an observation about something you agreed or disagreed with from the article. Because of that, I would wait until you come up with all those things are, what all those things are, so that you can then summarize them in the thesis statement. Because a response thesis statement is going to look something like a map of the paper. You're going to say something along the lines of, and I'll give you an example um, if we were, as if we were doing from the critical, defining critical thinking article. Um, This would be a perfectly appropriate response in a response situation for like we're writing here. You can see that it's got the first person. You can include a first person again. In fact, you should because you're talking about what you think and what you agree with with the article and what you don't. And so in this case, you can see in a thesis statement like this that there's a couple different points that this author wants to make and they have put them into the response. This is explaining the points that they're going to kind of talk about later in their paper. So that's why I say that it might be a good idea to write your thesis statement last because whatever you write in these points, the first main point, the second main point, uh, the third main point, you can take those and summarize them into a thesis statement. Uh, a really helpful transition when we're dealing with um, summing up these points is overall. Overall, I agree, Lumen, and then you explain why. And if you have anything you don't agree with, you incorporate that as well. So that's what you'll do with the thesis statement, and hopefully you can see why I suggest you do it last. For the summary, you want to have an opening sentence that explains the author, the title, the source, the publication date, all of the specific rhetorical information, because that's always what you need to include at the start of a summary. So this is going to be um, paragraph, the, the in this case, unlike the first outline that we did, uh, the, the letters are going to be your paragraphs. So the first paragraph is going to be the introduction, the second paragraph is going to be a summary, the third paragraph is uh, going to be uh, your body paragraph. And actually, because this is divided into different parts of the paper, so introduction, summary, body, the body is going to constitute um, three, and if you need it, maybe four paragraphs in the paper. So this would be a paragraph in and of itself. This would be another paragraph. This would be another paragraph. And then this part D is a conclusion, which would be a final paragraph. So if you look at this, you're probably going to end up with something like one, two, three, four, five, six paragraphs. Um, that's kind of like the plan as it's laid out here. The summary is going to be its own paragraph. It's the second paragraph of the paper. And anytime you write a summary, you start by including rhetorical information because that is how you cite a summary. That is how you cite a summary. If you just launch into giving all of the a summary of all of the major points and you don't identify but these major points and these ideas are coming from an article, you're going to get in trouble for plagiarism. So for this summary section, you want to start by creating a sentence where you have the identifying information, and then you're going to include the main major points from the article, because using those, you're going to create your summary. 
I'm including in the announcement a couple sources about summary writing. Let me see if I can pull one up. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to include this section about writing summaries that will say the same thing. This is how you organize a summary. And it'll tell you in summary focus work, the first part of the introduction, you're going to introduce the name of the author whose work you're summarizing. You're going to introduce the title of the text being summarized, maybe explain where it was presented, then explain the main ideas of the text you're summarizing. So typically, this is how you set up the first sentence or sent two sentences of a summary. So um, this is a helpful article. There's another one called, um, I think tips for writing summaries. I can pull that one up that I'm also going to link at the bottom of the announcement. And so if you're sort of struggling with what to include or how to create the summary, check it out. Check out these steps. This will tell you that the first sentence of a summary should include title publication, title of article, author's last name and first initial year of publication, a strong verb, the main idea of the whole article. Um, Honestly, this should be the full name. You don't need to include the first initial, uh, but it's not a big deal. If you do that, I'll, I'll let you know. But looking through here for the summary writing tips, you can see uh, that this is going to be kind of advice that will help guide you in creating a summary. Now, when you get into the body of the paper, the first main point, it says topic sentence, and I strongly suggest that you do write a complete sentence. And this is going to be something like, I agree or disagree when the author said X. Actually, for the very first body paragraph, the piece of advice I'm going to give everybody is to explain whether or not you agree with the author's point in general. I agree with the author's main point. These are some options. I agree. I disagree. Um, these are some opening topic sentences that you could include. And then here for this section about examples, details, and explanations, these are going to be your reasons why. Why do you agree or disagree? Um, what is making you agree or disagree with this? Explain a couple reasons why you feel the way you do. Now what we have here, this outside source support, this is optional. Uh, for, for every single paragraph of the paper. Um, you can see it's listed here, but your outside source that you included is not necessarily going to fit into every paragraph of your paper. So you don't have to include it in every single paragraph, but you do need to include it at least once. My suggestion on how to incorporate that source, because it is part of the assignment and part of the rubric, my suggestion for incorporating that source that we found on the databases is to actually, in the third main point, have a topic sentence that looks like this. I agree more with the author of whatever the title of reading three is, or This is a way that you can incorporate, if you're struggling to know how to incorporate your outside source, write an entire paragraph where you explain which you agree with more on the subject, the original article we read that's the primary focus, 
or the outside source that you found, because that's another way of reacting to that original source by saying, yeah, reading other perspectives really made me agree with the original author, or reading other pers perspectives made me think that the original author didn't know what they were talking about. Um, and then the conclusion, you reword your thesis. So those are some pieces of advice um, as we go into writing this unit three response essay.